I'm going to take a moment to tell you what AQ really means. I'm going to tell you the truth about what's in your ionic compound solution. You've been dying to know, so here it is. Okay, so let's look at the crystalline structure of a solid ionic compound. Here's one of the most popular ones that we eat uh, at all of our meals, table salt. If you look at the structure here, you can see that in the solid form, table salt forms a very fixed crystalline structure. It's a beautiful network of sodium ions and chlorine ions, all fixed in this beautiful three-dimensional crystalline structure. Now, it actually exists as a one-to-one -one ratio of sodium ions to chlorine ions. But this, this crystalline structure is why ionic solids have that beautiful, shiny, um, glittery look to them. Um, but when we put a chemical formula, when we use a, when we dissolve a table salt in water, something really interesting happens. Oh wait, here's another look. <laughs> I forgot about this slide. Here's an all more open view where you can really see the beautiful um, and intricate three-dimensional network of sodium ions to chlorine ions. So the purple are, represent the sodium ions and the green dots represent the chlorine ions. And you notice that they're alternating, positive to negative, positive to negative. So every positive ion is surrounded by negative ions, and every negative ion is surrounded by positive ions. So that it's a very stable three-dimensional structure. Now, when we dissolve that salt in water, we know what happens. You can't see it anymore. And the reason why is because, okay, if you look at this diagram, on the far left, we have a two-dimensional picture of the crystalline structure as a solid and we're going to add to it water. The water molecules are those little Mickey Mouse ears with the O's and two H's. Um, so when you dissolve that solid what ends up happening is those ions get separated from each other and they get completely surrounded by water molecules. We call that hydrated. They become completely hydrated and that's why we can't see them anymore when they're dissolved because they've been separated into these individual ions. They're no longer interacting with each other and they're no longer in a crystalline network. Now they're completely hydrated ions and they're free floating in solution. And they're just hanging around waiting for something to happen. And that's why we get interesting chemistry in solution that we may not get when we have ionic solids as a solid. All right, so what does that really mean when you write it as a chemical equation? Well, if you were to write a chemical equation and you wrote NaCl with AQ after it, what that actually means is you have Na ions and Cl ions floating around in the water. So in your mind, you could replace NaCl with the AQ designation with those two ions. Let's take another look at another example. Let's just say, for example, we have magnesium nitrate. Magnesium nitrate is an um, ionic compound that's made up of one magnesium ion and two nitrate ions. Now when we put the AQ designation after that, that means magnesium nitrate dissolved in water. So what does that mean in terms of the number of ions? Well, when you split that all apart, when you break it all down, you get one magnesium ion and two nitrate ions. So you get a relative number. You get a ratio of one to two. And it gives you a total of three ions in solution altogether. Um, so if you were to see MgNO32 with the aqueous designation, that means that substance is completely dissolved in water and it could be accurately represented with a magnesium plus two and two nitrates with a minus one. And there you have it. That's what's really happening in your aqueous solutions.